today on Beyond. She still loves you, and she doesn't want you to beat yourself up about how you treated her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's scolding actor Malcolm Jamal Warner from Beyond, and what is he going to say about it? But first... We're here today to hopefully reach my son, Kevin. He was murdered last November. Um, we went to a party one night and three boys arrived. One of the boys made a vulgar comment to me and my brother asked him to apologize to me. And the kid just absolutely went crazy and um, ended up shooting him. Um, losing him was losing a part of me. And it's affected our entire family like that. I have a lot of feelings of guilt about what happened and um, a lot of nightmares, I can't sleep. She shouldn't be feeling this guilt, it wasn't her fault. She did not kill her brother. Uh, he was merely defending her. He was trying to um, subdue a situation that was obviously getting out of hand. He was my best friend in the whole world. And that, um, I'm really sorry that this had to happen. He had to die the way he did. Using his extraordinary psychic ability to communicate with spirits, he's transformed lives by unlocking mysteries and sharing secrets from the other side. James Van Prague, best-selling author, renowned medium, and your connection to the world beyond. Hi, you are Eileen? Yes. Nice to meet you, Eileen. Eileen. Nice to meet you. So and nice you're Colleen. Yes. Lots of leans. Thank yes. you. <laughs> and uh, I know you're here to contact your brother, yes, who passed away. He was killed, is that right? My son. Your, your son, brother. your brother. Yes. Okay, okay. So I'll do whatever I can to help you with that, all right? Um, okay, hold on. Who's Michael? My brother, Michael. Uh huh. It's Michael? Yes. Okay, Kevin's here talking about Michael. And you just talked to him on the phone or something? Not Kevin's telling me you talked to him about being here in the show? Yes. And who's Jimmy? Would you, like my name, James. James. It's my grandfather. Okay, he's passed over, yes? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay, what? He's here. Is there a health concern with him right now? Um, well, your, your brother, he has a lot. He's old. He's okay. Kevin old. is here. This is your son, and he's here. And he's sitting right here, okay. and he's right with you. And he's talking about he's been w around this James person, so his I'm grandfather. Right. He's been around him because he loved him, okay? I don't know if someone made a blanket or made a quilt or made something with Kevin's name or something about him on it. There's a quilt from the um, Organ Donor Consortium. Because he's talking to me about the quilt. He wants me to do the quilt. He's talking about the quilt. Okay, I'll do the quilt. <laughs> and he's just too... I mean, he, they just called me again, and they're like, we really need you to get this in for the quilt. Okay. What is the driving car? Was there a car involved in this? No. What? Who has a new car? Kevin had a new car. Yeah. Okay. He oh, my gosh. purchased that car before, before he died. He's, he loved it. Yeah. Okay. But he's talking about the new car. And that was a big deal to him, and he said he looked forward to that, and he took pictures of it. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? He told me he took pictures of that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Is there a Pat or Patty somewhere in the family, please? Pat, my mother. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she's passed over? She's still here. She's, no, still, she's here? still here. Okay. You're a son. I loves her so much. Would you please give her his oh, love? Please. Okay. And um, I'm going to tell you something, which is really, really interesting. That's a good interest. I, I know. Well, it's not I bad just, I'm interesting. I think I know what you're going to tell me. See, so you're psychic, so you do know what I'm going to tell you. No, but it's, I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's almost like he's telling me you knew that he was going to pass over, and when he was a baby, you always had this feeling that you knew he was going to go early in life, right? And I'm going to tell you something, which he's telling me. He said, Mom, that was our plan this time around. And it's something you kind of always knew in the back of your mind, right? He told me two weeks before he died. We were sitting on the bed, and... He was folding, well, he conned me into folding laundry with him. Yeah, of course. And I was folding the whites, and he was putting them away, and he sat down on the bed, and he was so serious with me, and he said, Mom, he said, I'm home. I'm home for good this time, because he kept moving back and forth to Arizona. And uh, he said, but something bad's going to happen, and I want to let you know ahead of time. He told me 10 days before he was killed. How was he killed, by the way? Shot? He was murdered. He was shot. shot. I thought so. There's a garden he's talking to me about that you wanted to put together in his name, or I don't know if it's in the back somewhere. It's in the front yard. Front yard. And you wanted a specific tree or yes. something, he said. He said, oh, she was very adamant about the specific type of tree to get. And um, he loved that. I mean, this guy is around you all of the time. Yeah. And when you hear the rattling on the panes of the window, 
Yes. It's him. <laughs> it's him. It's him. I had an exterminator come out because I thought there it's was a rat. <laughs> I've been going crazy with all these noises that have not been there. Yeah, it's him. Okay. You have a, you have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I feel a lot of guilt, so does he know that I'm sorry for what happened? It wasn't your fault, he said. He wants you to get over that. That is not your fault, and don't do that to yourself. All right, Apollo. <laughs> he's very sing-songy when he comes in, by the oh, way. Yeah. Sing-songy. He likes to sing, and he's like sing-songy. Such a great guy. Um, you can't do that to yourself. You can't. He doesn't want you to do that, and he wants you to make a promise you will not do that. As you're sitting here today, talking to him, would you please make a promise? Mm -hmm. And he's, oh, he's so funny. He said, cross your heart and hope to die. Because <laughs> you always used to do this. <laughs> right with him? It was like, cross my heart, hope to die. Do you understand that? Yes. This is what he's saying. So can you make that promise? Okay. I will make that promise. Okay. Good. Thank you, sweetie. Thanks. God bless you. Thanks, sweetie. Thank you. I don't know if someone made a blanket or made a quilt. Let me just start, first of all, with that quilt, Eileen. It seems Kevin wants you to finish that quilt. Okay, I'm going to do the quilt. I promise. I promise. He's telling me you knew that he was going to pass over, and when he was a baby, you always had this feeling that you knew he was going to go early in life. I knew exactly what he was talking about, and that was... There were so many things that validated that Kevin came through. And I needed that. I needed that so bad. But from early on, I, was, I always had this fear of losing him. And when he said that I knew that, I mean, Kevin and I had that little conversation on his bed, which we talked about. And he said, Mom, I know something's going to happen. It's really going to be bad this time. Who has a new car? That was his pride and joy. It was his first nice car, so every chance he had, he had the top down driving around so and when you hear the rattling on the panes of the window yes it's him there's these noises and lately it's been really really driving me nuts so i caught the exterminator and they've come out twice and they keep saying that it's not in your house i'm telling you it's not in your house and i'm going okay kevin you need to stop this because i can't stand it anymore <laughs> and i'm so. watching you colleen and i can see that your brother you guys obviously mm -hmm. you were close am very i right close, very close and he wants you to make a promise you will not do that. He said, cross your heart and hope to die. <laughs> well, I feel better that he um, doesn't want me to blame myself. I made a promise. <laughs> you made a promise. Yeah. Cross your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thanks. Thank Love you. you. Thank you. Next. Is there once um, a possible marriage for you? Was there a possible marriage or wasn't there? James picks up on the secret Malcolm Jamal Warner can't admit. Plus. I also want to go to Canada. How does a sentimental journey from the past turn into the shocking reality of the present for this woman? It's coming up on Beyond. You watched him grow up as Theo on the hit sitcom The Cosby Show, and now as Purdy, the tough-minded survivor on Showtime's Jeremiah. So what happens when Malcolm Jamal Warner sits down with James? Malcolm Jamal Warner. Mm -hmm. I love him. I used to have a crush on him when I... Uh when he was on the Cosby Show. The was, great, uh, great he's guy. He's got the best attitude and a lot of fun. Best personality. What was he like for you to do the uh, reading he, with? He contacted me because he wanted to get in contact with like family members and friends who had passed over. Mm -hmm. And um, I met his mother like a long time before on a plane ride, which was really weird. So we came back together for this reading too. But he was so wonderful, open, and really just down to earth person. Right? Yeah, he's a good looking guy, I must I'm say. Feeling those dreads. He's very good looking guy. Yeah. So I want to share with you what happened. Let's, okay. Let's take a look, shall okay. we? All right. Okay. I have a, a, a gang of people I want to connect with. Both of my grandfathers, both of my grandmothers. I have a, uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Michelle, who uh, passed away a couple of years ago at 30 in cancer. Um, I have a, uh, a guitar player friend of mine, Mark, uh, who just passed away a couple of months ago. Yeah, so I guess I kind of want to see who, you know, who shows up and who feels like talking. <laughs> Hi Malcolm, nice to meet you. Hey, good to and meet you. And thank you very much hey, for being no with problem. us here and no doing problem. this today. And hopefully we'll get in contact with some people who are floating around. Okay. Is there once um, a possible marriage for you? No. 
uh, I mean, we, you know, I was in a, a, a long relationship and we talked about it, and I think she was closer to wanting to get married than, than me. Who was the very religious Bible person? My, well, my grandmother and my Aunt Mary. Okay, and Mary's passed over, hasn't she? Yes. And didn't she have a Bible? Or did she try to, hold on. Did she talk to you about verses from the Bible or try to teach, ever teach the Bible? Aunt Mary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she's showing me the Bible. Okay? Because she comes in with her Bible. She's very proud of her Bible. She's looking in the Bible to see where it says you can talk to the dead. She's going on about this. She was an expert. This is what she's talking about. She's an expert in this. Make yes. sense? Yeah. Do you have a friend of yours that passed over? A, a couple. Okay, is there yeah. a male friend that passed over? Yeah. Uh, was there anyone that passed over the car, by the way? Yeah. In the car accident? The friend that in the car? That's who I want to give you. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Because he's here. And he wants to give you um, his love and his joy. And he's saying, I made it. I made it. And he said, Malcolm, he wanted me. He wanted me. He wanted me. And he's been thinking of me. And I just want to be known. <laughs> he wants to be known to you. Okay? Uh -huh. I know you've been thinking about him this morning because he said you, you thought about him this morning and he said you thought about him last night. Make sense? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I understand that. Got you. And um, there's also talk about either watching television last night or doing something about thinking of him while you're watching TV. <laughs> wow. I, I don't know if you, <laughs> you understand that. Yeah, yeah, I watched this tape from another day. I keep on getting uh, also a feeling of wanting to go out at night, like to a jazz club, just hanging out, having dinner or drinks, and hanging out and listening to music at a club. And I want to tell you, this is a heartfelt memory. This is like, you know, those moments in life where you remember, when you look back at your life, you remember some really great times, mm. <clears throat> and this was the good time. Wow. And that's what they want me to tell this person wants me to tell wow. you. Wow, okay. Yeah, please understand yeah. that. Yeah, I get that. Do you have any questions, Malcolm? If you want to ask, I mean, throw um, these things at you. Yeah, there, sure yeah, there, there was, um, there was someone who I, I kind of expected to, um, to show up. Is a woman. Yeah. That was close to you. Yeah. Like a young woman who passed over. Yeah, she's been by in the corner over here. <laughs> There's a connection with you in your heart. Okay. Because she keeps on, puts a string to your heart, to her heart. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure if it was a girlfriend, but there's a definitely a soulful connection with her. Okay. She's standing in the corner back here. She's coming in now. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if she was really outgoing. Was she a little shy sometimes? Yeah. Okay. I feel with her there's unexpected death as well. Yeah. Because I don't know how she passes, but she goes very quickly when she passes. Yeah. And she just says, I didn't know what happened. She doesn't know what happened. <clears throat> she also feels very lonely, by the way. And she, sometimes she gets very depressed. N now? No. Oh, when she was alive. Okay, yeah. She, got, she would go into her own little place and of depression, but you make her laugh at herself. You made her laugh at herself. Okay. I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. I know that. She still loves you, and she doesn't want you to beat yourself up about how you treated her sometimes. <laughs> 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 Was there ever thought of marriage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, my friend, I'm going to slap you now. Because when I asked you earlier, well, you almost got married that time. Wait, no, wait, she, wait, she, well, she <laughs> thought about her more than I, she thought about her more than I did. Okay, I mean, but we, that's why know. when I was before, yeah. I was probably picking her up about that. Okay. That's probably what that was. All right, my friend? Yes. Okay, Thank I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> um, and I don't know if she was really outgoing, but she's a little shy sometimes. He really hit on her personality about, you know, she's the type of person who would kind of play the back. And she was, you know, in the corner the whole time, letting, you know, letting everybody else speak. And it's like, wow, that's, you know, that's totally, that's totally her. Who was the very religious Bible person? Just the way he was, he was describing my Aunt Mary, and this would be something she would totally disapprove of. So when he's, you know, talking about seeing her go through the Bible, like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's her. I keep on getting uh, also a feeling of wanting to go out at night like to a jazz club, just hanging out, having dinner or drinks, and hanging out and listening to music at a club. And I'm gonna tell you, this is a heartfelt memory. You know, that I remember us hanging out at Lava Lee. 
then Stanley Clark walks in and we were both excited, you know, to actually meet Stanley Clark and that was we had a, a really great time that night. You know, I came to the reading open. Um, so it was a lot of stuff to take in. I can definitely, you know, walk away uh, with feeling that he really saw these spirits that were really important to me. Next. But my son thought, you need to be here, Mom. You need to come. She never planned to be here today. But see how it turns into the trip of a lifetime. Next, on Beyond. We now join James in the audience. Um, there's a male figure here. It's a father figure, a father feeling that I'm getting. And there's talk about either a slide projector or working with this. Did your father pass over? Right here. Is the lady in yellow? OK, may I come to you? Because I think I'm with you. I don't know if you have slides, slides, mm -hmm. or if your dad used to have slides in a slide collection. Yes, he did. Thank you. That's where I want to go to. Okay. <laughs> Just to verify it, okay? And do you still have some of those slides, or were you looking at them? Um, I do have the slides. Recently, I put them someplace, okay. so I know of the slides. That, okay, because it keeps on referring to that, okay? okay. I also want to go to Canada. I don't know why I'm going to Canada. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, my grandmother's from Canada. Okay, okay. There's also, um, I feel there's a throat condition here. I'm not sure if it was your father or this grandmother. But there's a throat problem or something in the throat. And I, I don't know what this is or I can't. I don't know if they put a hole here, a tracheotomy. That makes sense? My dad actually did have a throat surgery at one okay. time. OK. Because he keeps on pointing to the throat, throat area here. And I, <gasps> it's a horse in a way. And I can't talk for a while. <gasps> when he passed away, that was where everything was focused. Yeah, OK. So when difficult. he comes back here, the memory that he brings, the first memory he has is how he passed over. So he's just giving me that as evidence for you, you know, that that's it. He no longer has that. But when he comes back on this level, he has to exp show you that, that you know it's him, OK? That's, I'm a survival evidence medium, so I bring through evidence, or they bring through it for me, OK? I want to tell you also that your father is trying to settle you down, because the first part of your life, you're all over the place and really trying to find yourself. And I want you to know that you're being guided by him, by your father. He's especially coming here, because you have a connection with him. There's a really strong yeah. bond with your dad. And you were there for him in the hospital, by the way. Yes, of And he course. wants to thank you for coming in there and sleeping there and being with him and trying to make him happy. I'm bringing papers, showing newspapers and stuff, and magazines and bring, you know, reading these things to him. Um, because he still has his mind, you know. He's a very smart man, very, in, very intelligent man. And he, he's, he loves color, by the way. And there's some color in paint or something. And I, yeah. you know, understand that. Because I don't yes, know if he I painted do. with oils or something, but do you understand this? Yes, I Okay. Because he's still doing that. And he wants you to know he's there, OK? OK, I'll leave you with that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I feel there's a throat condition here. Now, when uh, there was talk about someone with a throat problem, that's where you got uh, very it, emotional. It seemed to touch you. Yes, it did. The last 24 hours of his life were very, very devastating for me because he couldn't breathe. And the sound in his throat was just a horrific sound that was very tough on me and so when I was in the hospital I laid on his bed for 24 hours and really tried to comfort him and get the sound was just very difficult for me to deal with. He's, he loves color by the way and there's some color in paint or something. The last present he gave me was an oil painting he made and had done. He painted? He painted and had it framed and gave it to me for my birthday. So what was a powerful moment for you? Is there a moment in this reading where you thought, oh my goodness, how did he know that? Well, everything was because I was one of these people, I, it had, I don't know, didn't know who James was. I'd never read a book, never seen a show. My son just brought me because my, my son thought, you need to be here, Mom. You need to come. So everything was powerful. And, and the Canada, my dad and my sister and I had gone back to trace our roots. And my grandmother was very powerful and his sister. So all of that came through and there were, you know, things that were just called to me. If you'd like a chance for a reading with James, send a letter to Beyond, P.O. Box 4399, Hollywood, California, 90078. We're on this earth for a reason. And 
and uh, it's all about growth. This is our schoolroom. When we feel down and depressed, just realize you're learning something from that. Try to understand that and keep on keeping on. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. There's a lady here. It's a mother figure or grandmother figure. And she's talking to me about her daughter sitting in the audience and her daughter having her teeth. <laughs> you never know how they're going to come through with it, but boy.